Did you know that out of every 100 businesses started, only four go on to achieve revenues of a million pounds a year or more? And did you know that 50% of businesses started fail within the first four years? And finally, did you know that according to the Kaufman Foundation, the rate of new entrepreneurs is growing fastest amongst those without a university education? Well, I'm very glad that I had no idea about those statistics when I started my first business at the age of 17. About a year earlier, my best friend Will had introduced me to the internet. And I remember taking one look at the internet and thinking, I can do something with this. All I need is a computer. Uh, my parents had just bought one of those. My office was my bedroom. I'd taken down my supermodel posters, and I'd pushed my bed right up against the wall to make room for a big desk. It was chaos. There were boxes, files, computers, and cables everywhere. But my office, sharing a room with my bedroom, had some really huge advantages. For one thing, it meant that my commute was the shortest known to man. <laughs> so I could work all night at my desk, walk across to the other side of the room, get straight into bed, and go to sleep. Now, on most nights, I'd sleep for an hour or two, and then I would get straight back up again, and I'd go to school. One day, on one of my very weary journeys to school, my mum, who was driving the car, turned to me and said, you've got to focus on your schoolwork. If you don't, you're not going to be able to go to university. Now, I really didn't want to disappoint my mum or let her down, but privately, I thought to myself, I know that's not going to happen. I'm already doing exactly what I want to do. Now, a few weeks later, and it's half term, so I'm not at school. In fact, it's 11.30 a.m. on a Wednesday, and I've just got off the phone. One of my contacts at a magazine had called me, and he'd said, I'll sell you all the advertising space that we have left in the magazine for 15,000 pounds. I knew right then that it was a pivotal moment. I thought to myself, if I do this, everyone that reads that magazine is going to know what my company does. And even better, my competitors aren't going to have anywhere left to advertise. So as a 17-year-old kid, I agreed to that £15,000 deal. My heart was racing. I stared out of my bedroom window to the fields outside in a state of shock. I couldn't believe that I'd just risked all the money that I had. But you know what? It paid off. It worked. Within a month, we had hundreds of customers, and there were more and more pouring in every day. It was a strategic gamble that I could only have taken because I had no idea about the rules. And before long, another breakthrough happened. I'd fairly spontaneously picked up the phone one day to a competitor, and I'd asked them, why do you charge so much for something that I know is so cheap for you to provide? And the competitor had sort of laughed at me and said, well, we do it because everyone else does. But I realized that I didn't have to play by those rules. And so I immediately reduced my prices by 50%. And as you can imagine, my customers loved it. The business started to grow really quite rapidly at that point. I hired six people, and by working really hard, we turned that little web hosting company that I'd started in my bedroom to a thriving business with 24,000 customers. 
And it was pretty much business as usual from that point on until one day I got an intriguing phone call. It was from a competitor, and to my surprise, they wanted to buy my business. Well, I don't think I did anything with the phone call. I think I got off the phone and just went back to whatever it was I'd been doing. But a couple of weeks later, I got another phone call, this time from someone else. And a few weeks after that, I got a voicemail from a different competitor who wanted the same thing. And after the fourth or fifth approach, I, it dawned on me that I needed to start taking them seriously. Now, as luck would have it, one of those companies was based just up the road. And so, perhaps naively, I thought, well, I'll go along for a quick meeting to find out a little bit more about what they're after. Well, after what I can only describe as an intense two-hour grilling, the chairman of this company sat back in his massive leather chair in his huge meeting room and said, OK, we'll make you an offer. We'll give you £750,000 for your business. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, that was quite good news, really. Um, <laughs> but somewhere along the line, as a young man, someone had told me never to accept the first offer. And so, out of my mouth came the words, thanks very much, but I'm going to sell it for a lot more than that. And incredibly, just a few short months later, that's exactly what happened. I sold that business that I'd started as a 17-year-old kid in my bedroom with my bed pushed up against the wall for £2.1 million. But why had I been able to start, grow, and sell a business in such a short period of time at such a young age? Well, I think it has a lot to do with not following the rules. Think about your life. Were you brought up to follow the rules? Or were you brought up like me, not really realizing that there were any rules? Or were you brought up to create your own rules? Now, I want you to fast forward with me about six years after that. I'm on business number two, and it's like I've forgotten everything that I knew back then. I'm working seven days a week. I'm doing all the advertising that I can possibly afford. But the business is barely profitable. I've appointed team leaders and managers. But it's like I'm banging my head on invisible ceiling. I just can't get this business to work. Each week is filled with difficult situations. The business is lurching from crisis to crisis, and that's making my team really demotivated and unhappy. I'm stuck in seemingly endless meetings, and as an introvert, those are my idea of hell. What's making everything worse and everything more difficult is that all around me, people are trying to give me their advice and their rules. But the more I try to fix things, the worse it gets. I'm basically trying to minimize risk at all costs. And for the first time in my life, I'm following the rule book. And it isn't working. I remember one day, after a particularly bad staff meeting, everyone left the meeting room, and I stayed in there alone. Now, I've got to describe this room to you. It was in the very basement of our building. It was a really dark room, no matter what the weather was doing outside. And it had damp growing up the walls. And it had these huge, thick bars on the windows. Now, those bars were there to stop people breaking in. But on that particular day, they felt like they were there to stop me breaking out. In fact, I was so low and so miserable that I was quite close to giving up. And that just isn't really who I am. But as I sat there in the doom, I began to realize something. 
I realized why this business was so different to my first. I had changed. I changed who I was as a leader. I'd gone from being the kid making everything up as I went along to being the grown-up following the rules. I'd gone from being innocent and naive to being knowledgeable and responsible. And I'd morphed from being a visionary leader into a run-it-by-the-book manager. I'd got really, really good at doing things like minimizing risk and avoiding rocking the boat. But I knew as I sat there that I had to change, because if I didn't change, my company wouldn't survive. Then, as I was sitting there in that meeting room, something remarkable happened. In one moment, I realized exactly what I had to do to turn things around. I thought to myself, I have to rebuild this company from the ground up, and I have to start doing that today. And so that very day, that's exactly what I started doing. I started following my gut instinct more. I went to my operations manager, and I said, stop everything you're doing and help me rebuild this thing. And I'm thankful to say he did. I started being less scared to try new things. When a loyal team member who handled all of our recruitment came to me and asked what she could do to help, I said, let's stop recruiting just in this tiny city, and let's find the very best people wherever they are, anywhere in the world. But I met resistance along the way. It wasn't always easy to rebuild the company. I remember the day that I was due to rip up the restrictive and legal heavy client contracts that we'd had for years and replace those with the freedom and flexibility that our clients really wanted. And one of my team said, if you do that, I'm going to leave. But I knew I had to follow my gut instinct. As I stand here today, I'm really happy to tell you that ripping up the rule book and instead starting to follow my instinct again has helped us to create a remarkable business that provides meaningful work to more than 600 people around the world and has incredible multi-million pound revenues and a 275% growth rate. And me, well, I'm rewarded, not just financially, but I'm happier, I worry less, I'm less stressed, there's less friction in my life, and above all else, I really enjoy what I do every day. But what did I really learn? Well, I learned that it's really easy to do things the right way and to follow the rules. But it was only by learning the hard way that I discovered that my biggest asset back when I was a 17-year-old had been my innocence. Now, you might be thinking, that's all very well for you, but how do I apply that to my life? Well, I'd like to give you an example. I've got a great friend called Phil. Phil is a qualified plumber, and a few years ago, he set up his own plumbing company just outside London. From the outside, it looked like everything was going really well, until one day, Phil called me up and said, you have to help. We need more customers, but we're struggling to stand out from our competition. And Phil was right. He was struggling to stand out. But why? Well, I think it's because Phil had used the plumbing company rule book when he created his company. He'd sought knowledge and advice from his friends who were also running plumbing companies. When he designed his website, he'd looked at all the other plumbing company websites and he'd basically ended up with something a bit similar. So Phil had accidentally created a commodity business, not a unique one-of-a-kind company that could truly stand out from the pack. So I said to Phil, you have to rip up the plumbing company rule book. You have to get a piece of paper and a pen and write down your rule book for the perfect plumbing company. 
And that's exactly what Phil did. He now has a thriving business that uses the internet to match people that need a plumber with qualified plumbers in their area. Not just outside of London, but all over the UK at a massive scale. And because it uses the internet and it does things differently, it regularly beats the competition on both response time and price. But you know, ripping up the rule book can go so much further than just helping with a business. It can help with your entire career. Take Kirsten. From the moment she joined my team, I knew she was different. When some of her colleagues would face stressful situations and start surviving until the weekend, Kirsten always seemed to thrive. And when some of her more junior colleagues would finish a, a project and sit and wait to be asked to work on something else, Kirsten always seemed to know what to do next. And so one day I asked her outright, what's different about you? And she said that she doesn't think of herself as an employee. She thinks of herself as an owner. She explained that her dad had once said to her, you shouldn't wait for the rewards to come to you. You should work hard and take ownership, and they'll come. And he was right. When I looked at Kirsten, I realized that she doesn't follow the typical employee rule book. She'd made her own. And in her rule book, you never sit and wait to be asked to do something. You just get on and do it. And in her rule book, you don't even act like an employee. You act like an owner. Now, back to you guys. Could following the rule book be holding back your business or your career? You know, when I was preparing for this talk, I, I looked back at 17 years of starting and growing businesses. And I realized that my idea worth sharing is that we are in control of the rules. And the exciting thing, the really exciting thing, is that we can choose not to follow other people's rules. And not only are we in control, but we can create our own rules. So if you ever find yourself standing still or stuck, whether it's in your personal life, your business, or your career, just ask yourself this one question. Whose rules am I following? And if the answer is somebody else's rules, then stop and just imagine what could happen if you created your own? Thank you. Thanks.